What's up everybody? Jack here and today I'm going to be talking with Paul who is a tourist who went to Nicaragua and Paul travels a lot. He's been all over the world. He has a YouTube channel with a bunch of the clips from the different places that he's been. But he wanted to talk about his experiences in Nicaragua, especially because there's so much misinformation about what it's like in Nicaragua. So now we're going to talk about this and Paul's going to share all of his experiences in the country. How you doing, yeah, man? Exactly. I'm fine. I'm great. Yeah. Let's talk about Nicaragua. <laughs> yeah. So, so tell, tell, first, before we get into what you did on your trip and what, what it was mm -hmm. like, um, let's talk a bit about what, because you travel a lot, right? Like, how, how often do you travel? Yeah, well, it depends year by year, but I try to get to get out of my own country like three or four times a year, uh, if that's possible, and if not, three times at least to get out like mostly it's May, July or August, depends. And then at the end of the year, it could be like November, December. So I'm like splitting in three parts. <laughs> and so, so what countries have you been to? Well, this year I've been, of course, to Nicaragua, um, Panama and Belize. These are the three countries that I did in Central America this year. Last year I did the other countries, like Guatemala and such. And um, after my Nicaragua trip in May, um, then I just came back now from an Asia trip. I've been one month in Asia. I really liked Asia and the different culture there. And the countries that I visited uh, was like Myanmar, Vietnam, like Southeast Asia, and, um, and ended in Japan. Uh, yeah, uh, Seoul. South Korea and Japan, which is completely different than, of course, countries like Vietnam and such. But uh, yeah, there's so many countries in the world. Um, and it's like, I don't know, it's like I have this travel bug in me. I don't know how long is this going to last. But um, yeah, there's still a lot of countries I want to see. And, um, and even places that I've already visited, some of them are places that I would like to go back one day. But uh, yeah, you never know. Yeah, and it's it's really interesting speaking to you because you, I think you're the person I've met in my life that has been to more countries than anybody else. And like, I, I'm a person who's traveled a lot. Like growing up, I was born to an American mother, uh, English father in Sri Lanka. I lived in Africa, Saudi Arabia, but I haven't traveled anywhere near. You've been to so many different countries. It is insane how much of the world you've seen. Yeah, but you're also, you're also interested, I see, and you say that you have a little bit different blood in your body. For me, it's the same thing. Like, my mom is Polish, my dad is uh, from Belgium, Flemish, and uh, actually, both of them also have the interest of traveling. And when I was a kid, at, on some trips, I went with them, and I always liked it. And I think that's where it came from, when I, when I said to myself, when I'm going to be grown up later... I'm going to travel to where I want to go. And um, yeah, since I like it, I just keep on doing it. First, I did it with a friend. And uh, now uh, there are a lot of trips that uh, I still do with a friend or I just go by myself. And more and more trips I do by myself. Um, just because um, it's not always possible for others to like travel in the same time period that you're going. So it, it everything has to match. Um, and since I'm going more than one time in a year, the, the last few years have been more than one time in a year, as I said, then uh, for some people it's also not possible. Some people don't have like vacation that much. I, I'm, I'm blessed to have a lot of free days. So I have 40 days a year. So if you have 40 days a year and you can split it in three parts, then of course you can travel um, three times in a year. Yeah, yeah. For, for two weeks each time. Yeah, almost each time for three weeks. Just now, Asia was one month, but that's because um, in the summer months um, there's less work, and then you can people can take longer off. So you can take actually three weeks or even a month. So and this year is the first time that I actually asked my boss because I'm still doing a nine to five job um, to actually have a full month free. And so, so tell me. 
there's so many countries in the world. What what led to you wanting to go to Nicaragua? Because as far as I understand, you wanted to go there, and you actually had a plan to go there in a previous trip, but it got canceled. And then yeah. you reached out to me, and we set that thing up with David. And so so tell us a bit about that. Like what 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 led you to Nicaragua? Because most people don't know Nicaragua even exists. Like, the, the thing is, I wanted to do a, a trip in Central America, and usually I prepare my trips myself. Sometimes I go with a local tour agency, sometimes even with another agency that's in another country. And for Central America, it was the agency uh, G Adventures. Um, I've heard good stuff of them. I also heard people who were not so happy with them, etc., etc. Um, anyway, I decided to go with them because... They had this program in Central America for for a, an interesting price, and I couldn't do that on that price. You know, I was like uh, calculating every evening, like, okay, I, I need to stay in 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 a certain budget. Um, and it was like a program that they had, like five countries, for I think it was less than two thousand uh, dollars, like I think thousand two hundred or something. Um, you must know that two, uh, $1,200, mostly, you can get like a trip to one or let's say two countries for that price. But five countries, I was like, whoa, I can't do that for that price um, with, with flights and transport and, and all that stuff. So um, I reached out to them and then, yeah, it, it went wrong the months after, like... Um, Things happened in Nicaragua, they canceled, then at a certain point it, it got better in Nicaragua because there were still tours going, but they were like very strict, like now we we will not send um, people there. And then I was thinking like, okay, from the whole program, Nicaragua was the inter most interesting part, like as far as I could tell reading the program. Um, not that the other countries were not interesting, of course they were interesting, but there was like more activities and more days in the program in Nicaragua than in the other countries. So when they decided not to go to Nicaragua, that was like a big blow in the program for everybody that uh, signed up for it. Um, yeah, and it, it, it was too late to cancel, etc., etc. And then I said to myself, well, I'm going to do Nicaragua next year by myself, and there's nobody who's going to tell me you can't go. So that's the thing, actually, when you go on an organized trip. You know, you're not, uh, you you're depend on, you're on the tour control. agency. And I didn't want to do that anymore. Um, cause, and then, of course, people in Nicaragua who live from tourism, uh, they expect at a certain point tourists to go back again. And we are now 2019, uh, almost on the end of it. And that tour operator that I just named, well, they're still not going to Nicaragua. Um, they told me that they were monitoring it day by day. That's what they told me back then in 2018. And then again, that's something that frustrated me because if you're monitoring it day by day, but you already tell me, well, we'll not, we'll be not be going there in 2019 and we also will not be going there in 2020, then what's the point of, of, about monitoring what's going on in the country if you already decided not to go there two years in a row? And now there is no reason to not go to Nicaragua. Um, uh, nor was it no reason to go actually in 2018 in August, August, because um, the problems that I know about happened there in um, in April or something. But uh, as yeah, I said, I've traveled to a lot of countries, and there are countries that have also or also had similar problems. Like look what's going on now in Hong Kong. There's still a lot of people going to Hong Kong. I mean, there is there is some protests going on in some streets. All right, there, there, there are some problems, but there are also people there going to Hong Kong and just visiting a part of the city and then stay there two days and then they go to Macau or they go to China or whatever and they've been to Hong Kong. So it, it depends. Uh, there are tours now going on in Iran and, and there are countries threatening to maybe start a war with Iran or something. So I don't know. I, I, I don't like when, uh, when people judge too quickly um, and when they decide too fast like okay stop we're not gonna do it this and that but I think when you're tour agency maybe it's also because of the the, the insurance uh, companies and etc probably they don't want to take uh, any risk um, which I can understand but 
to me the communication that they give me was too late and um, not really the best communication that I had with <laughs> with them but as I said uh, a lot of people are happy using G Adventures um, and so everybody has a different experience for me I will just continue the way I'm doing now like in most cases I will just like travel on my own or reach out to local agencies or local people as I did with, with you because you you live in Nicaragua and um, and try to set up something with local people and they will they will be more than happy actually to show me around I think yeah, and I will yeah. say for, for those of you listening so if you look online and for information about Nicaragua there's a lot of articles that make it seem like it's a war-torn country that's in civil war and these kind of things and like I I live in the city where all this stuff is going down. And it is true that during April and the couple months after that, there were a lot of roadblocks. It was dangerous. But that was a very short period of time that has now ended over a year ago. And exactly. people still think that this is like a war-torn country. And the reality is, like, it, it's, it's not. And, and first off, it's dangerous for the local people. Not for the tourists. People want to treat the tourists as well as possible. So many local people treat tourists really, really well because they know that if those tourists go home and they share that they had a good time and that what you hear online and all that stuff isn't right, then more tourists will come back into the country. And almost all Nicaraguan people want more of these people coming and visiting their country. They want Nicaragua to be known most people yeah. don't even know where Nicaragua is, and it's such exactly. an awesome yeah. place. Like, I, I, I moved there, and I moved back to the States, and after going back to the States, I saw that my life was so much better in Nicaragua that I moved back to Nicaragua, and I've been living there for the past 10 months. And as far as I'm concerned, I want to get residency in Nicaragua. I want to live there. I want to find a wife in Nicaragua. I want to have a awesome. family in Nicaragua. Like, and that's for me living in the city. I live in Managua, which is the place that all this stuff is happening. And for those of you guys listening, what you need to understand is that the violence happens to people who participate in these protests and outwardly speak against the government. If you are a tourist and you're just walking down the street, you are not in any more danger than if you're in a city in your own country. Of yeah, course, exactly. yeah, there's thieves, there's people who may want to rob you, but that's the same in all countries. You know, you got to be a bit careful. Try and travel with friends. Don't get drunk and walk down the street at one in the morning, you know? But the, the reality is, it, it, what you see online about Nicaragua and what it's actually like there are two completely different things. Yeah, there's so much things online that I don't like. I mean, like if me, I, I read a lot of like tourist blogs. I also read on TripAdvisor and I know TripAdvisor, you can't relate to everything you read there. But some things are just funny. Like you read about some, I don't know, maybe, I, I don't know if they were Americans or Canadian people. Doesn't matter. They, they went to Nicaragua and they, they write about the fact like uh, about Managua, the capital. They write like, Oh yeah, if you come to uh, to Nicaragua, to Managua, Managua, you don't want to stay there. Get out as quick as possible and just go visit Leon and Granada, which are colonial uh, cities. Um, but and people write and stuff like that they have not visited Managua because of because of what? Because of something they heard, something they scared of, but something they didn't really, um, and they they didn't witness it or something. I'm like, then, then don't write about it. I mean, I'm not going to write to people on the internet, even on my blog or, or even on a forum. I'm not going to write things like, ah, oh, you should avoid this or this place if I haven't been there. And even if you've been there and you had a bad experience, still uh, you can say what experience you had, but still that is not a reference because somebody else can go to the same place and, and have an awesome time. So, but people who write stuff like, haven't been there because they, they got out of there as quick as possible, right? And then say that it's dangerous and it's not nice. I was in Managua. You live there. I was there. I visited a lot of stuff in Managua. And I must say, it's a really nice city, a really nice capital. 
um, nicer than some other capitals I've seen in the region. And actually, Managua, I wrote on a blog post about it. Managua, you are beautiful. That's a blog post I write. I post it on Twitter it is because I really want to tell how it is. Managua is a beautiful city. And I don't see why this capital city is such a, why, does, why it has like a, a bad name. Um, and people posting this stuff on TripAdvisor, like that, that makes me, I, I don't so know, I can't I take I, people like this serious. For reference, I think I understand why. And so for a lot of Western people, they're not used to seeing like trash and walls and barricades. And the, the airport in Managua is located in front of an area that, that isn't very pretty. There's a lot of trash and that kind of thing. So as soon as you come out of the airport, that's what you mm -hmm. see. And a lot of people think uh, that that's what all of Managua is like, but that's yeah. just not true. It's just like any city. If you look at it from its worst part, it's going to look yeah. crappy. But if you look yeah. at it from its nicest part, it's going to look awesome. And it's all about knowing where to go because there's plenty of places in Managua that you can go to that are beautiful. Like I live in a neighborhood called Bologna and the houses in Bologna are really pretty. There's not as much like walls and barbed wire. You see a lot of trees, tons of like really pretty like gardens and all sorts of stuff. Whereas if you go to another area, it's all like concrete and sheet metal and there's no trees. So, you know, of, of course that area doesn't look as good, but that doesn't yeah. mean that the whole city is like that. It's a yeah. whole freaking city, you know? And that's what's so important is to be able to understand, okay, just because this part looks like this, and just because all the other tourists arrive in the airport and instantly leave Managua, that doesn't mean that there's nothing interesting in Managua. Like, I live exactly. there, and I love living in Managua. It's, I, I love it. I really do. So it's, it's always confusing for me. But I, I understand where people are coming from. I just don't agree. Yeah, that's like you say, Managua is beautiful, there's a lot to see, that's why I wrote a post about this on my blog, um, which by the way, if anybody would be interested to see that, it's Paul meets world in one word, and some videos I post on my YouTube channel. Check out the description of this video, guys, and in the description you can find a link to Paul's blog. Yeah, it's still a WordPress blog, but I'm going to change it in uh, soon to like a .com or .net. Uh, web address um, but anyway yeah uh, I decided to wrote something nice about Managua because uh, I couldn't find uh, much nice things about it maybe I should just post something also on TripAdvisor but then again yeah I, I prefer just to to post stuff on my on my personal blog um, and then people who are interested they can read it from from me because uh, I've, I've been to the place um, and that's my personal experience uh, instead of going on a forum and actually discuss with people, you know, one is going to be against it, the other one is going to say, no, it's, it's great. And, and it's a never ending discussion then. Yeah, absolutely. So could you share, okay, now we've talked about some of the circumstances, some of the things people are going to read online about Managua and Nicaragua, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. But you haven't told us too much about your actual trip here in Nicaragua. So can you share more, like, what did you do when you came here? Um, who did you work with? What was your experience like in Nicaragua? Well, uh, first of all, uh, I had a personal guide. Uh, it was the first time that I had really a personal guide with me um, who lives also in Managua and who showed me the rest of the country. Like, uh, I've been to Leon, which is a very nice colonial city, just like Granada. And in Leon, you can do an activity that you can't do anywhere else in the world. So that's volcano boarding. That's that's just awesome to have this to do this. And like, if you go to Nicaragua, you gotta do this. It's like a, an experience you can only do in Nicaragua and in Leon. And yeah, that's that's something I wanted to do. But of course, Nicaragua has beautiful nature, like volcanoes, lakes. So I visited that. I visited a lake, uh, Lake Apoyo, right? Uh, Apoyo, that's, uh, Apoyo. Yeah, that's close to the capital city, Managua. Um, in Granada, when you go to the colonial city of Granada, you, ha you are directly actually at Lake Nicaragua. And at Lake Nicaragua, you can take a, you can take a boat 
to an island that is in the middle of the lake with two volcanoes, and that's the Ometepe Island. Yeah, there I there stayed well. also a few days. I mean, yeah, I've seen like maybe the classic Nicaragua trip, but it's my first time in Nicaragua. And if I come back for a second time, why not? Then probably I will visit some other places because there's still lots to see in that country. But you got to start somewhere and have been a week. In Nicaragua and in that week I saw a lot um, and um, with, with with local people like with David who showed me uh, also uh, where he lives you know and where he goes and uh, what what marketplace he likes to go to like I mean for me that that's better than than to go uh, than to go with a tour operator who's gonna tell you all right we stop here for 10 minutes everybody take a picture then we go to the bus and we drive to the other side of the city and then we're gonna see something else but when you were local people you make contact with local people on the internet um, and then they show you their daily day life and how it's like the experience is completely different and that's what I also liked about my trip uh, in Nicaragua is the people that I met, the people that uh, the local people that I saw in the streets, uh, the way the Nicaraguan people live. Um, so I can only say that from all the countries I've visited in Central America, it's I think the best together with Guatemala. It's for as far as I can tell with with nature, the cities that I saw and, and the people, you know, and also the food. I also tried a lot of good food in Nicaragua, which I was pretty surprised about um, in a good way. So, um, yeah, I, I, I can only say positive things about the country. And I just hope that people are going to people who, ha who are still in doubt, like, you know, is it good to go to Nicaragua? Should we wait? There's no reason why you should uh, why you should wait. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, just just go if, if if it's in your head go yeah if you have the interest exactly so what can you can you share more about the costs like when you were in Nicaragua and when you worked with my friend David who by the way if any of you guys are interested in traveling with a local person uh, send me an email at jackdermotpitman at gmail.com. I know loads of local Nicaraguans. A lot of them are fluent in multiple languages. So if you want to travel with a local who will show you their experience, show you their perspective, take you wherever you want, just get in touch with me and I can hook you up with a person who can do this for you. Because I understand that online, it's kind of tricky to find a local. You'll often find touring and booking agencies but really, when you're paying these, you're paying a huge upcharge, and then there's a bunch of middlemen, and it usually doesn't benefit the locals too directly. But if you work with me, we can find literally find a local person who you can travel with, and you are paying them directly. That money is going straight into their pockets. Yeah, the cost of the tour. Um, I just remember that uh, I paid uh, around 800 uh, US dollars something around that and with the agencies that I had contact before that was a lot more it was always over the thousand dollars like you go to thousand three hundred thousand five hundred and some some even asked like two thousand that was like two thousand for eight days um, some agencies they offer you two countries for that they offer you let's say I don't know Costa Rica and Nicaragua or Costa Rica and Panama or something for two thousand dollars to two thousand for one country. Um, well, yeah, maybe they put you in five star hotels, but they ask you like, what is your budget and what uh, what hotels or what places would you want to sleep? Mostly, I say standard because I am I'm, I'm not into luxury. And actually, um, if I can sleep in a hostel, because some tour agencies work with hostels, then it's fine because I know that the price will be will be lower, right? Um, but the best thing was to just like find local people and then then you can do it on a on, on a much on a much interesting price than any agency that will offer you a hotel or even a hostel uh, again of course you can go online book hostels yourself um, book everything yourself even transfers or, or this or, or trips in Nicaragua like the only reason why I wanted to go with somebody is uh, because I admit about the recent events that were in Nicaragua, 
but also some things were easier to organize with somebody local than by myself or or to pay a lot with the agency. One of these places is Ometepe Island. Ometepe Island, um, I think the easiest way was to have David with me. Uh, he was driving a uh, Jeep and uh, that was very easy to go from one place to, to another. We even took, um, I think it was a German couple um, they were hitchhiking in Omete because it was so hot and they were like in the sun walking around and they, they, they didn't have nothing. So they, I don't know, they were waiting maybe for some public transport or maybe they, they, they had a bike for a few hours or I don't know. The girl was burned. Her face was completely burned. So she was happy that she could sit in our car and that we drove them around to a lot of places that if they had to go all that on Ometepe Island by foot, um yeah <laughs> then i don't know then i don't know what would happen to the girl she was already red like a tomato so um that was that was a funny experience but then i was like lucky i was like yeah this it, i mean it, it's good if you if you have more days there if you stay there for a week let's say then then okay you you can just rent a bike and you have all the time in the world but i was there for like i think two full days so then it was easier to just drive from one place to the other. Um, let's say, see the most important things of Ometepe Island. Um, yeah, so that was one of the things also that, that made me choose to go actually with a local who knows the place. And by the way, David, he has family uh, at Ometepe Island. So I didn't have to stay at any hostel, I just stay with local people who live there, like a homestay. So that was also a nice experience to stay at home with somebody. Um, and yeah, that's, that's also completely different than, than a hostel because in a hostel you meet other tourists. Um, and if you sleep um, at a homestay, then, then you're really with local people. You know, you're trying their food. You know, you go outside with them. You, you, you experience everything like, like how they see day-to-day -day life. Um, so that was, the, that was the nice part. And for my stay in Nicaragua. That's absolutely my favorite way to travel. Because if, yeah. if you travel and you're just going to tourist places and you're just around tourists all the time, it's like yeah. you see the image of the country, but you don't really feel the country. You don't know yeah. what it's really like. Whereas if you travel with locals, then you're really going to get a different, more accurate experience of what that country is like. And also, it's important to understand, for any of you guys who are interested in traveling, like... The rates that locals pay for things and the rates that tourists pay for things are completely different, even for the exact same thing. And I'll, I'll use yeah. an example, right? A lot of tourists come to Managua and then they immediately go to Leon or San Juan del Sur or Esteli or Granada, right? And I'm going to use San Juan del Sur as an example here because this is a very, almost entirely a uh, touristy place, right? When I first came here, the people I was with would pay $75 per person to travel to San Juan del Sur from Managua, okay? Taking a shuttle from San Juan del Sur to Managua costs about 200 cords, which is like $8 per person, okay? So tourists can pay up to 10 times as much money yeah. for almost the exact same thing. So not only do you get a better, more accurate experience when you're traveling with locals, but you can also save a lot of money, especially with traveling costs and food. In San Juan del Sur, they know that Americans are used to paying between 10 and $20 for a meal. So they'll charge that much. But the reality is, the locals eat for 100 Cordobas per meal, which is about $3. Yeah. So you ha it's, it's really funny, too, because the tourists will pay 10 bucks for the exact same food that the locals yeah. just pay $3 for. So if but you travel with locals, you can save mm -hmm. so much money. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I can give you an example uh, from my last trip. So um, I've been to Asia, done some countries there, and one of the countries that I've been was Vietnam. And I did a tour in Vietnam with a local agency from Vietnam, right? And um, 
So they picked me up at my hotel and we go for the whole day. And I was the only foreigner, you know, like Western tourists. Like all the other people in my car, they were local Vietnamese tourists. They came from the south of Vietnam, you know, to that was in the north of Vietnam to visit the north. Uh, and and some I think some people were from China. But the guy, he had to he knew he knew some Chinese, so he had to speak Chinese and Vietnamese. And then especially for me, because I was the only one who just understood English, right? So he talked English to me, right? And um, so at that tour, it was noon, we go to a restaurant. I was with all these people there who couldn't really talk much English to me. So I was like sitting there, okay? And every everywhere I went with with these people, I saw groups of tourists, Western tourists, you know? And they were all looking at me like, what is he doing with all these local tourists there? They could, they just didn't understand. So because let's say you visit the palace or you visit the temple, right? And there's like one bus after the other coming. So I, I jump out of my bus with some, some Vietnamese people, right? And go in. And then the, the other guys, they're just like watching, like, how did he end up in, 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 in this tour, you know? And all I know is I'm doing a tour much cheaper than what they paid, because they came there with, um, you know, a foreign agency, right? And I was with a local agency that local people use, you know? And people from Vietnam and the South want to visit the North, they also go to an agency and they book a tour. They want to see something from, from, from their country. So they, 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 all, they came from all the parts of Vietnam, they flew in to the capital city, did a tour there, and uh, they were actually happy that there was one guy like me because uh, two guys actually they practiced their English with me they were like they didn't expect this like a foreigner on a tour with us yeah and I visited all the same places that the other foreigners visited except I paid what a Vietnamese citizen paid you know and the tour was great because sometimes they, you think ah oh, you have to go with a foreign agency this and that no 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 you can just go with a local agency that local people use you know and if the guide speaks English, then you will be fine, you know. And the whole day trip that I did there, I was to Halong Bay, I think. Yeah, just went great, smoothly, and I would I would do it again. Like, uh, and I was actually happy not to be maybe with Western tourists, you know, but be with with tourists from from Asia, you know. They are different. Uh, they different in their behavior and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And for me, I don't know. I felt pretty relaxed. Maybe more relaxed than if I would be on a, let's say, on a tour with, I don't know, many European or American tourists or Aussies, you know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's funny um, that you bring that up because, like, so well, I live in Nicaragua, as I mentioned. I'm used to being one of the only Cheles in around. And Chele is a Nicaraguan word. It means, like, blonde or light-skinned or foreigner. Depending on who you speak to, it means something different. Um, but in general, it means foreigner or like white person, right? And I'm used to being the only one. And I will say that in the beginning, I felt really singled out. I felt like I stood out and drew a lot of attention, right? But now I've gotten so comfortable. I, I walk around in the street. I walk around alone. I, I feel completely normal. But if I am with a group of two or three or four other cheles or foreigners or white people, then I definitely notice. I'm like, oh, wow, we are... We are drawing a lot of attention. But if I'm just one with a couple Nicaraguan-looking people, it's like I, I don't even draw any attention. Just look comfortable yeah. and normal, you know? But anyway, we are, uh, we are running out of time. i got to end this video pretty soon. So that was really, really awesome. I'm really glad that you asked to do this video, Paul, because more people need to talk about their experience in Nicaragua. It's really, really amazing country. I, I absolutely am... am it, moving there changed my life, like, and it's kind of ironic because for me, I moved away from the United States to live in Nicaragua for a better life, which is it completely contradicts what what most most people hear, right? Because a lot of Latin Americans want to live in the United States, but when you earn money online, life's completely different, right? And so, yeah, yeah. for those of you guys who are listening, I do have a course that is all about living in Nicaragua. This is something that's relevant to you if you are interested in touring there and visiting, or 
if you're interested in living there and experiencing what it's like to be local. The course costs $20 and is available on Udemy. You can get it by looking in the description of this video and clicking on the link. It's going to tell you everything about what to expect when you enter the airport in Managua. I'll show you what the airport looks like, talk about how to access your money, talk about costs, talk about how tourist visas work, how residency works, all of the laws, the regulations here, everything that you need to know to feel that you are comfortable to travel within this country or live here is in this course. One more thing I want to say. That was that, you remember when I came to Nicaragua, I came from Panama and I had to show my yellow fever card. That's because I came from Panama. That's why they asked, because if you come from another country, yeah, you, um, they, you don't need it. They don't even ask it because I was surprised I was asked for it. But the reason was because I came from Panama. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's for, for those of you guys listening, there's there's a couple different requirements when you come into the country. Um, one is, depending on where you came from, you might need to show proof of a yellow fever card. Um, in my case, I've never needed to do that because I always come here from uh, the United States or from Costa Rica. So in these situations, I don't need to show that I got a yellow fever vaccine. But if you are flying to Nicaragua from a country where uh, yellow fever is present, then you're going to need to show your yellow fever card in order to be let into the country. Otherwise, you'll get quarantined. So that's good to know. Yeah. Panama, that was the country. Yeah. All right, then. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want to get in touch with me or with Paul, just reach out. Uh, you can send me an email at jackdermotpittman at gmail.com. That's J-A-C-K-D-E-R-M-O-T-P-I-T-M-A-N at gmail.com. If you would like to talk to me directly, you can book time with me. It costs $20 for 30 minutes, and I will share anything you want to know. I will tell you exactly what my experience is like in Nicaragua. And you can also check out the Nicaragua course. Again, it's only $20, and it will give you everything that you need to feel comfortable traveling or living in Nicaragua. Anything you want to close with, Paul? I don't know. Like, if you travel, I always say safe travels wherever you go. <laughs> so uh, I can always end like this, like safe travels to those who travel and like to travel. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Ciao.